All right, here we are back, another video. All right, so this one's gonna be about the venerable MPC 2500. Uh, and this is a JJOS video. Uh, some things I wanna point out with this system, some cool stuff that kind of address the limitations of this machine. Okay, the main limitations of this machine are the fact that this thing only has 32 voices, meaning it can only play 32 samples at a time. And it depends, there's a lot of variables on that too. So if the sample is long, if you have a long, um, like a ride sample, ride symbol sample, and it goes on for whatever, you know, 10 seconds, and you're playing a, a ride like ding, 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 it's going to stack and it's going to stack all the way up and hit 32 and max out just on a ride symbol. So it's important to trim your samples to the shortest that they can be without cutting out, you know, the vitals. So I bought some sample packs from uh, mpcsamples.com that have come with samples that are way too long and max this thing out just with, you know, a drum track or even a cymbal track. Um, so there's that, and then there's, um, you know, the amount of parts that you play, and then if the part is a mono, meaning if it's in mono, so in, um, in, in here you have mono samples, and then you have, uh, the voice, poly or mono. Now those are the two things, so mono means that when you play the thing, and then you play it again, it cuts off the previous so if you have a five second sample and you play it, you know, tap, tap, the second tap is going to cut off the first one until you tap it again and it'll cut it off. So you're really only getting one voice used over and over. And if you have it on poly, then it's going to overlap itself. So depending on how long the sample is will dictate how many overlaps you get and how fast you play it, obviously. So the poly is going to take up more voices than the mono is big time. So for example, uh, I think these are all poly. Let's see here. Yeah, these are all set up poly because they're drums. So in drum land, you usually have a poly scenario because drums like to ring out. Now if that was set to mono, it would cut off that ring and it would sound like the old drum machines used to sound. <laughs> it would sound shitty. So you want that to ring out. But if you go here and you look at it's taking up a lot of voices when you do a roll like that. One, it's a stereo sample, so you get two voices that hit. That was... So you see that? That happens to be a long sample. Let's go to here. All right, that's a long sample. So if we do this, it starts to stack up real fast. Look at that. So if I have a, a fast, we're done. That's it. Now that doesn't mean you're, it's not going to sound good because it's basically going to cut off the, the very first played um, sample. See how it goes backwards like that? And so in that very first sample, who cares? Even if it cut off the first five samples, you wouldn't really hear it. Okay, now there you go. So if you do this, all right, it only gets to about 15 because it's a shorter sample. See that? Cuts off there. That's a long sample, so you can just keep building up and building up and building up. It's way too long of a sample, okay? Way too long. Look at that. It just totally takes a while to, to disintegrate. And that's going to get in the way of everything. Okay, there's a good sample. It's not going to build up too much. There you go. There's another long one. All right, so you get the point. The long samples are not good, especially if they're drum samples and you're playing them over and over again as in a rhythm. So let's go slower on that just to demonstrate. You know, if it was... It still it builds up, okay? Still, we're taking about 18, 19 voices with that one fucking ride simple. It's unacceptable. Okay, so here's the limitation of this machine. 32 voices at one time, okay? And if you're dealing with long samples that are played repetitively, you're gonna use up those voices very quickly. All right, 
So here's a way to deal with that. Let's say that I did want something like this. I wanted a track that sounded like that. But I didn't want to use up 18 or 16 voices. What you can do is you can get a track up. I'm going to mute this one. That's a drum track. Um, you can get that up and, and say, give me a drum here. There it is. Okay, and then So my, my keyboard's a little fucked up, so it's, it's triggering other sounds. You see that? But so what? So let's say that was the actual track. Okay, so. All right, so we're up to 32. Okay, great. No more, no more voices left. Just on that one fucking ride because it's such a long sample, okay? But, but we want that. So we take that and we say, okay, I want that. All right, so we go to another track, and we make it an audio track, okay? Now, this is the cool thing, because you can take this now as an audio track, and you can tell it where you want the input to be. And in this case, it's the analog would be the, the inputs. You can go digital, another input, main out is what we're talking about here. Those are our, our three choices, the main out, the digital input, which is the digital input in the back, analog, so you got three for the, for the track recording. In this case, we're going to do main out, which means it takes the main out and routes it back in and records it. Okay, so we want the monitor to be on, yes, and we can do a mono, but we can also do a stereo track, and I, so I, think, I, I think I'm going to do that. We have 107 megabytes of memory, so that's not an issue. Okay. We have 10 minutes on a stereo. It's not going to be 10 minutes. So now all you really have to do is do this. Hold the record and go play. It's going to automatically record this and stop at 8 bars. Okay, the track is fucked up, but that's okay. This is an example. Okay, so now if we go down a track, mute that. Okay, that's muted. And just play that. Okay, it records it a little bit low for some reason. A little bit lower volume, but it's there. Okay, now, and if we look at the fucking two voices... Okay, it says four because for some reason these are, I haven't figured out what these are doing sitting there. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. I'm not sure what that is. <clears throat> but basically this track went from using 32 voices to two voices because you can bounce it down via the audio track. Okay, it's a cool little thing. Now the, the fucked up thing is that you can't change it after that. You're stuck with what your is, but that's a commitment thing. You gotta, you know, it's like old school when you bounce tracks down, you, it's a commitment. You just have to deal with that. So just make sure that your levels are set correctly when there's a bunch of voice or a bunch of samples and stuff in it, and that you're, um, you know, that you're happy with it. And then boom, 